Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Not just another episode of Mighty Car Mods, but a mighty finale for the end of season four. Now, street cred. Nobody knows exactly how to get it, but everybody wants it. So in this massive finale episode, we're going to be running a social experiment. We're going to be buying a car that nobody thinks has any street cred and then converting it on an absolute budget to see if we can get people thinking it's awesome even though the car sucks. All right, so the first step, Moog has to go and buy a car. Mad, I'm out of here, dude, and I know exactly what I'm gonna get y'all. So Moog's on his way with our new car. Um, he wouldn't tell me what it is, but he did say he got an absolute bargain. So, um, yeah, hopefully we've got something that's kind of cool that we can work on. Moog, I like to buy cars in the dark, which never ends well. Um, Moog just likes to not ask questions and just hope that the car will be magically, perfectly okay. This is the guy who bought a Jeep. Bought a Jeep, didn't loan it, bought it and drove it. What a mad car, dude. What are we gonna do with that? That's a... It's a, it's a Volkswagen. I know they're like the most pedestrian cars ever made. Which is why it is the perfect car for our street cred episode. Did you you pay did you pay a lot of money though? Because you could get a lot of car for what you paid for it. Now look, these are usually around four to five thousand dollars depending on condition. This one here has rego till May next year and was one thousand dollars. I know what you're thinking, how did you do that? But the story gets better, Marty. These rims have got brand new tires. I've already sold them in advance for $200. This total car so far has cost us $800. You got airbags, power, everything. It works, it's been serviced, it's clean. It, it totally works. Everything is there, everything you need. And it's a Volkswagen, which means it's freaking awesome. Uh, it's freaking slow and it's freaking ugly, but 800 bucks is pretty good. $800. I will, I will give you that. That's Thank right. you, Marty. And it's, Does it's, it work though? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Everything about it, it's like, Air conditioning's cold, the brakes work, it's recently been serviced. It's like, it needs a clean, of course, but it is absolutely perfect. Do you want to go for a drive? See yeah. for yourself? You are going to love it, man. It's got some go. Yeah, man. That's pretty good. That's not, not turbo or anything fancy, but it drives quite nicely. It's a Volkswagen, mate. That's what they do. They drive nicely. That's what they and do it, best. You know what it does? You know what it does have going for it compared to some other cars of a similar vintage. It feels like solid and yeah. planted. Just it's stop. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's great. It's, it's perfect. Too. Yeah. It's quiet. And it's comfortable. Look, it's there's air conditioning. There's airbags on both sides. You know, uh, when I'm when I got it dropped at my house, I didn't even look at it because I, I knew that it was a bargain, dude. A thousand dollars for a perfect car. It's pretty good. It was, it was advertised for one and a half thousand dollars, but they really needed to sell it. And I'm just like, thousand bucks, get it gone. Yeah, just park down here. Yeah. Um, thousand bucks and everything works. Everything's perfect. Yeah. We just got to work on it now. Yeah. <laughs> the hell is that? Um. There is no reverse. That's the one thing. Um, there's no reverse. <laughs> there's, there's Dude, no. How are we gonna park it? The other four, one, two, three, four, and five work. Yeah, going that way. If we want to go that way, so we can't park it. You we can't, can't get it rego. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything. Dude, you you bought a piece of. Shit. Where are you going? Nah, it's filthy and it smells weird. Yeah. What's with you? You buy cars. That oh, smell weird. what's that? What cars? That oh, smell weird. what's that? Oh, wow. Oh no, it's yellow. Wow, what's that? <laughs> this is a Mark III Volkswagen Golf, and you're probably thinking that it doesn't look like it has much street cred at all, and you'd be right. With uninspiring performance and conservative styling, it's not turning any heads at all. 
We made an anonymous poll online and after taking in hundreds of votes, it came back with a street cred score of just 3.2 out of 10. Our mission is to try and transform the car and increase its street cred value so that the modified car community actually thinks it's cool. With a total budget of $1,500 and $800 already gone on the car, we've got $700 left for mods. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of all the paint on the car, but we wanna see which method is the best for removing said paint from the Golf. So we're gonna try a bunch of different methods and see what works and see what doesn't work. It's gonna get nasty, messy, and ridiculously awesome. Removing the paint's gonna be a big job, so we've got some volunteers from the Mighty Car Mods Forum. It starts and runs. Starts and runs well. What doesn't it do, dude? It does yeah. everything. No, it does no, everything. No, no, that what it, doesn't it, it do? It does everything that you need a car to do. What's the one thing that you don't need in a car? The uh, one thing you don't you're need. You're talking so much crap, man. Pubes. Pubes is one of them, the other one is reverse. Oh yeah. Like how often As do you, you... I, I reckon in the total time you own your car, how much of a percentage of time do you use reverse? Less than 1%. They're heavy, generally. Built like tanks, which some people think is a good thing, except I think when you're trying to go fast, that's not a good thing. And the problem with Marty's argument is that he was dating an expensive heavy Euro at one stage. <laughs> they can look mean with a little bit of work, Martin. And our whole goal here is some street cred. That's what we want. What is street cred? Who knows? It's an undefinable and liquidy kind of thing that changes and moves in time as culture and people mutate through their lives. I don't know what it is, but our goal is just to get this cheap car for one and a half thousand dollars and actually turn up to a meet and have people turning heads and going, wow, that looks cool. But when you've only got one and a half thousand dollars to spend and we've already spent more than half of it on the car, you can't afford to add things to the car. So what we're doing is taking things off. using grinders is taking a long time so we're going to use paint stripper on the bonnet and see if that's an easier way of getting rid of the paint okay so we're double gloving for extra safety paint stripper is that is... kind of like what you do when you're on a first date i heard people do that i was going to avoid a joke like that i thought maybe we'd get rise above that level for a change okay anyway so you double glove because this stuff is evil Paint stripper is the worst. It will eat through even like your normal gloves you'd wear, like examination gloves. It will just eat straight through it. And is then paint stripper a kind of paint that earns its living on a pole, Martin? <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> At first, it looks like it's not doing anything, but soon it starts to sizzle like bacon. This is definitely an easier way of doing it. So we decide to bring out the car and do the rest outside. We gotta get a game on. Um, well, we've just been um, grinding inside. That sounds pretty wrong. Uh, um, but we just realized that uh, we do have some paint stripper left and it actually seems to be the most effective way of getting rid of a lot of paint quickly particularly on these curved bits that would have been really hard to grind. So we are, um, we're just giving it a little bit of sanding with some, um, some very gritty sandpaper so that the, uh, the paint stripper has some channels to sink into. And then um, we're gonna strip all the paint off. That's the plan.
Okay, so we are back at Mighty Car Mods headquarters, aka Marty's mum's driveway. Now we managed to get rid of most of the paint, but there's still a little bit more work to do before we move on to the next stage, Martin. That's right, I've never done a back to bare metal respray before, so it's gonna look mad. A respray? Is that why we're stripping it so we get like maybe primary? We're not painting it. We're doing something else, man. We're doing something special that's never been done in the, the history of automotive galactic engineering. But I'll tell you in a second what we're going to do. First of all, we just got to finish cleaning off the paint that the paint stripper didn't eat through. So we're going to do that, and then we do our mad, um, Dude, this our mad design work. This is <laughs> you're going to love it. Most of the paint is gone and we've ground through the galvanising, so it's time to go to the shops. Here's some shops. Martin, is there a place you can buy beer here? Yeah, but then you want paint? Yeah, but I also want some beer. Now Martin, what we need is beer. we need a Japanese beer, we need German beer and we need Australian beer. And that, look at that Martin, is that is what we're painting our car with. With beer. With, what? with beer. We're painting it with paint, mate. We're no, drinking we're painting with it with beer. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to uh, get Australian beer, we're going to get Japanese beer, and we're going to get German beer, and we're going to paint our car with it. German lager, Martin. We've got German beer, we've got American beer, we've got Australian beer, and we've got Japanese beer, and we're going to use that to paint our car. Next up, the supermarket. Salt. We need that, Martin, and we need a lot of it. The old Smart Buy cooking salt. Salt and beer. Man, that's how we're going to paint our car with rock salt. Do you, you reckon that's like? Do you prefer that over R and B salt? Oh, I do. I like my hard rock salt, Martin. Let's go. No. That's, that's veggie dude, that's salt, gross. dude. It's sea salt and vegetable seasoning. Look at all the goodness. Look at the nutrients. Why can't we get some beef salt? No, not her again. Okay, time to head back to the driveway. So in our quest for street cred and to turn heads, we need an interesting paint job on the car. So we're gonna be exploring a totally different way of coloring up a car and we're gonna let the thing rust. Now this is a culture that's kind of quite common in some car scenes at the moment that stem from the rat rod scene. People are rusting up their Civics, rusting up their different cars, but most importantly, it's a popular thing to do with Volkswagens. But we want to see which kind of country's water makes the best rust. So we're going to be putting beer on the car, mixing that with salt and letting that rust. And we're doing it multicultural style. So we're going to be using beer from America. We're going to be using proper GDM German beer. We're going to be using some JDM beer and we're going to use some how you going mate VB which is very brutal beer. We're going to be mixing that with salt and we're also going to be comparing the rust that each of these beers create on a different panel with our own special brew of liquid that's already been through a human. So Marty I reckon we've got to start with the driver's side and I'm feeling a little bit of German beer because we need to encase this with with the German spirit, because mm. that is where the driver Traditional comes in. Traditional German and imported from Germany. That's Good as German as we're going to get, mate. Good so go. I'm going to take that off. This might take me a little while, Martin. Tell us all the story, Martin. There we go. That is going to be awesome. Mad. German rust. Mad, mad Japanese engine power. Awesome. It's like a, a, a fuel additive. Japanese yes. rust. You ready? Yep. This is awesome. I can't wait to see what the Japanese rust Dude, looks like. that one's really frothy. It's very frothy. Now, Martin, VB, yep. it needs to go on the arse of the car, doesn't it? There we go. VB. Now, passengers, Martin. Um, passenger, I reckon, Budweiser, because this is what all the USA people are into, this whole look. Yep, that's true. Right on here. Got another can of VB, which was lucky. <laughs> and we're just gonna do. There we go. Oh, Martin! Oh, well, that one smells. I... Not only that. This is the panel. <laughs> this is the panel that we um. Look, this is the panel that we.
it on and we're already seeing oh, some, oh, we're already oh. seeing some quality rust there next up martin and it feels wrong to do it we've got to put salt on the car to eat through the paint purposely put salt on something to rust it it just oh, goes, against, it goes everything. against everything i believe man but do it throw it on there next week that'll eat through and destroy our car just try it no a good go oh it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> i'm not touching that panel ever. i'm not touching it That's either dude. you touch it no, you know what's good about this, Marty? It's like a whole paint job for like 15 bucks, the cost of beer. Cheap. I can't believe that a ki two kilos of salt only costs a dollar. It's a bargain. Absolute bargain. Five minutes ago, we finished pouring the beer on this car. It's already starting to rust. You can see it change color right in front of your eyes, particularly once we put the salt on. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but that's gone from a very, very silvery colour. You can see it's starting to bronze up, um, particularly in the parts where we went heavier into the paint, so there's less paint, less galvanising, less coating, stuff like that. But funnily enough, there's a particular beer that's in the lead, and it's on this side. Obviously, the uh, human juice is in the lead by a long way, probably because of all the acid and vegetarian foods that have come out of it. Um, but this is Budweiser and VB. Budweiser and VB, and VB is smashing it. Look at it go, it's all orange. The car's literally changing colour in front of our eyes, it's awesome. So cool. Okay, so it's been five days since we stripped the paint off the Golf and covered it in beer and salt. And this is what it looks like now. The car's built up an amazing amount of rust in less than seven days. The various beers from around the world have eaten away the metal and left us with this beautiful brown rust that looks like we don't care, even though we do, for maximum street cred. Some kids on the internet told us that for real street cred, we need more low and more stance. So let's get to it. Okay, so we have just failed the shoe test in a massive way, so it is time to get the little Golf and get it lower. So, we've just had this package arrive. These are 100% German quality coilovers. That's what the box says anyway. Now, people often talk about how cheap uh, coilovers are that you can get from, from overseas, like uh, BCs and different brands like that. They've got nothing on the Germans. These here, this is a full set of height adjustable coilovers. These were 137 pounds. Now in Australian dollars, that's $210 for a set of four adjustable coilovers. Now on top of that, you've only got 20 pounds to ship them here. This brand new from Europe, I mean, I, it's, I don't know how they can do that because that is a quarter of the price that you'd pay for some kind of Taiwanese ones. Dude, there's nothing in the box. Oh, I don't hear, no, it's just all, all much littler than I thought. There they are, Martin. So that there as a component, if we divide that whole price by four, that actual unit is around $40. That, $40. And that's gonna dump our little golf on its butt. It's gonna be mad. The first step is to jack up the car, get the wheels off and remove the stock suspension. So as you can see by my use of multi-grips, I've only got one 18mm spanner. I've never encountered 18mm bolts on a Japanese car before. Um, as always when you're undoing these, be really, really careful. Um, you don't want to damage your paintwork. Um, because sometimes they can slip and just cause lots of damage. With the lower strut bolts undone, the strut top can be rattled off and the whole thing can be extracted from the car. Mad. The original strut top is bolted down to the new coilover and the centre nut tightened. Now when you're doing suspension, a lot of the time people run into problems with not being able to do up these nuts. You can't actually grab the shaft of the shock absorber because you'll ruin it, which will ruin the seal. So you have to do it a different way. Um, one thing you can do, you can go and buy yourself a spark plug socket if you can find one the right size. In our case, it's 21 millimeters and it's perfect. And what you can do is put that over the nut, then put your Allen key through it. And then with a spanner, you can do up the nut that way. The hub is bolted into the bottom of the coilover and everything gets tightened up. We got some steel wheels for 80 bucks each, but they've got massive offset and we're not sure if they're gonna fit under the guards. 
the wheels fit, but the guards are going to need some work and we've still got to adjust the suspension. The rear suspension is even easier with just a few bolts holding everything together. It's a good idea to place the nuts and washers down in the order that you remove them so you don't forget how it goes back together. We can't seem to find a way of getting the uh, rear shocks out unless we pull them apart. Um, there's no, no clear and easy way to get rid of them. Alpha Vita Sam. Guten Tag. Ist gut, ja? Coilovers have various adjustments depending on which model you get. Ours are the most basic height adjustable ones that get harder the lower you go. They have collars that you can wind up and down using a C-spanner that comes with them. By winding the spring seat up higher, the ride height goes up with it. For maximum street cred, you want to make sure it's almost undrivable. With our suspension sorted, it's time to get some cosmetic mods. But first, we need a test drive, which was all going well until this happened. So sticker bombing is still pretty massive. People putting heaps and heaps of different stickers all over panels of their car. That is probably a little bit too expensive and we're trying to do it on a budget. So we've got this weird manga comic. I have no idea what it is or what happens in it. Weird people and orbs and robots and stuff. So we're just gonna cut the pages out of this and then stick them all over the front panel and it's gonna look mad. Decoupage is practiced in nursing homes by elderly people all over the globe. It's the art of decorating an object by gluing cutouts of paper onto it. It was first seen in East Siberian Tumart and later made its way to China in the 12th century. From China to Germany and then on to Sydney, Australia. We're now using pages from a Japanese manga comic book to add some JDM street cred to our golf. The comic book cost 10 bucks and we've only used 10% of the pages, so this panel has literally only cost us $1 plus the glue. The car used to be white, and this white is not matching the colour of the rust, which means we're not getting maximum street cred points. So we've got to make it black. We've only got a few cans of spray paint, so we're going to attempt a respray on the cheap. Respray, $7.50. We're adding some street art inspired design factor to the number plate area by using a can of Brunswick green spray paint left over from the zombie car build. We're spraying it on thick so that we get extra paint runs. This is the hot thing to do in Germany right now for that extra street cred when travelling on the Autobahn. Next on our list is the roof, which is way too stock looking. A few half full cans of green, copper and flat black are sprayed on to complete the effect. I think we've just got to make the bonnet look like it's been stored under a tree for 10 years. In 24 hours we have to... Yeah. We're painting the bonnet in the colours of the German flag to show the golf's true heritage. What better to put on a car that is covered in rust than rust guard? It's very important to not let your car rust more than it's already rusted. Or well, people might think that you don't care. Someone told us that you have to clear coat your bonnet after you've painted it, so we did. Hello Martin. All the kids are doing it these days, mate. You got busted sticker bombing something, dude. No, I'm not. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm not actually doing it because I want to do it though, Martin. You got busted sticker no, bombing. No, I'm just doing it because the it's what the internet told me to do, Martin. Our car has come a long way, but there's still a few things to sort out. We're in serious need of some camber for the wheels, and more stickers are needed for maximum street cred. Next up, we're going to stick on our plastic over fenders. Is that what they're called? I don't know, mate. Over fenders? All I know is that they were thirty dollars for four of them, shipped from Poland. That's so cheap, and they're actually like custom made to fit in the bumper and in the skirts, and they're all like cut. Yeah, I like them. 
Some heat helps the flares take the correct shape and a whole heap of Sikaflex sticks them to the car. Now you could use double-sided tape. If you don't want to commit to Sikaflex, we're going to commit to have them on there for the rest of the car's natural life. So this here is a guard roller, otherwise known as a fender reforming tool if you're from the United States of awesome. Um, basically this attaches to the hub of the car and then that goes up against the lip of the guard and rolls. It's awesome if you've got big wheels you can lip the guards and if you watch episode 2 of the original season you'll see how not to do it with hammers or if you don't have one of these but this is heaps better and we're going to show you how to do it. The guard roller attaches to the hub and pushes back on the panel. If you're like us and don't have paint to ruin you can go hard. Now that the wheels can't rub on the metal, we can install our plastic flares for more clearance and then add some negative camber to complete the fitment. So these coilovers don't come with any camber adjustment, but what they do come with is oval holes on these bottom mountings so you can pull your hub out as far as you can, which will give you just a tiny, tiny bit extra camber. If your car isn't just for parking hard, you probably want to get this done at an alignment shop. Otherwise, have a mate pull the bottom of the hub out as far as possible, then tighten up the bolts. We're giving our rear guards the same treatment to get us more clearance, then the flares can be stuck on. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, it's on you, man. Stay Thank still, I'll help you. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's on you, now it's on, dude, get it's going me. into your pants. I have to kick you. <laughs> I got him. Hang on. So this would not be a mad custom Euro ride without some mad custom Euro stickers. So the first thing we've done is we've made a country sticker. Now you've probably seen these on lots of cars. They say CH on them for Switzerland or Deutsch or whatever. So we've made our own MCM one. Now the other sticker that's very popular on Volkswagens and other European cars is Nürburgring stickers, which is a famous track that's in Germany. You would have seen it on all your PlayStation games, but it's not really as relevant to us. So we've made our own version of the Nürburgring and that is the Royal Nasho Park. This here we scanned off Google Maps. It's got an umlaut at O just to show how much we love Germany and that is going on the back of the car just to show how awesome and Australian we are with our mad German car. <laughs> does just ask him what have we done Martin we did the TRD laser we did the Civic we did the zombie car and now we've done that I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I lost for words, I can just look at it. Wabi Sabi is a Japanese philosophy centred on the acceptance of imperfection and flawed beauty. It's a concept used by artists when nature is implicit in the transient nature of their work. It's hard to believe that this is the same car we bought just a couple of weeks ago. Over time, the look of the car will continue to change and morph in the weather. But what we need to do now is take it to the people and see if we've actually increased its street credibility. So we're on our way to Eurofest in our mad Volkswagen. Dude, we're going to like, to our people. I know. We're, we're, we're going to be readily accepted by the Euro community, aren't we, Martin? Dude, this is what all the Euro people are about. They're about like mad golfs and old Beamers and Mercs and... Yeah, it's going to be sick. It's, we're, we're basically taking the car home. That yeah. said, they, they might hate it. Why would they hate it? I don't know, man. We, we've kind of, we, maybe we're messing with their vibe. Push the boundary. But we'll see. Anyway, so we are, um, we're on our way to Eurofest. We should be there in about 10 minutes. Um, and uh, hopefully it's a very, very mad day. And hopefully they like the car.
Okay, so we're down at Eurofest 2012, and this is Andrew. How are you, man? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good. Dude, um, tell us a bit about Eurofest. Eurofest? Honda Fest? What are you talking about? What? Isn't today, no. isn't today Eurofest? No, it's a JDM yard meet. All Hondas. Um. I, th I thought we were at Eurofest. No, wrong place. Wrong place. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. We're at the wrong meet. It is. I'm going to just check and see when, when it was on. Eurofest was last weekend. Oh, really? Oh, sh**. So we're at the wrong meet. Awesome. Well, what, uh, what are we going to see today then? There's, there's, so there's no Euros here? No Euros here today. So a lot of high quality Hondas, you know, a lot of B series, a lot of K series. Are, P, are, are you allowed to bring a Euro here? If you've got a Honda motor, I guess, yeah. Okay. He was not joking. Like some kind of strange nightmare, there were Hondas everywhere. to turn up to one of the biggest Honda meets in the country in a Volkswagen. Yes, this is awkward. Well, at least we're turning heads. That's what it's all about, right? We were directed into a parking spot away from the Hondas and away from the people. Nobody cared about the golf. We failed. But then something interesting started happening. As we hid away from the car so nobody would know it was ours, more and more people started checking out the golf. Soon there were more people around the golf than the other cars around it. Was it possible that the little golf had resonated with the people? Its human qualities of imperfection, its flawed beauty, its urine and beer painted panels. We decided to pretend that we didn't even know who owned the car. Do you love it or hate it? Yeah, it looks sexy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, would you own it? Yeah, hell yeah. Look, if, if photos are anything to go by, if you had to go crowd favourite, unfortunately a rusty golf seems to be the crowd favourite because the crowd, the mob, they rule, they speak and a rusty golf seems to be their favourite. You can rust German cars but not Japanese cars, is that how it works? Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so uh, yes or no, love it, hate it, in one word? I love it. Uh, look, I reckon if you bought that for five grand and wheels and lowered and you actually spend money to make it rusty, it probably owes them six, seven grand. Yep. And so is it disappointing that it's getting more attention than your GTR? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say, yeah, it is disappointing, yes, it is. It's obviously all about street cred here and looking mad. Now, this car behind us, he's been getting a lot of attention, this rusty Volkswagen thing. All I want to know is, out of ten street cred, what would you give that car? Seven. A seven? All right. What about you, man? You're an eight. Yeah, you like it? That's what it can be, yeah. Dude, street cred, the golf, out of ten, what do you reckon? Seven. Seven. Dude, what do you think? Uh, eight point five. I'll give it an eight because it's a Euro car. <laughs> about a nine out of ten? Uh, eight. <laughs> seven? Yeah, eight. Eight. It's getting eight out of ten. Now, just out of interest, how much would you give your own car street cred out of ten turning heads? Um, a five. You don't see this every day. So I think the first thing is people are like, holy you can get away with driving a car that looks like that. I reckon that's pretty cool. Um, I'll just I'll show you on this side as well. We've got something that I haven't I personally haven't seen before either. It's some kind of manga decoupage thing. Have you seen anything like it? I mean opinions? It's it's sticker bombing to the max. Look, that's like a Japanese ca comic. That's that's fantastic. You can see he's even taped the bonnet and done the rust different layers. That's just He's taking time, this is cool. Out of 10, what would this get for street cred? Hard nine, definitely hard nine. 
Awesome. And Justin? Um, it's a tough one. I'd say uh, attention wise, probably, yeah, 10 out of 10, because you're going to get every photographer taking a photo of this car today. So The sticker on the back of who made this car? You guys, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's you guys, right? Yes. It had to be you guys. Well, why would you mean it has to be us? Why would you say that? Because you guys are just pushing it. You know, a lot of people have the Nurburgring stickers. Yeah. We know that someone's Nash actually traced the Royal National Park. And, uh, oh, that's, cool. that's so cool. I want that sticker. That's very cool. So did you do this? Is this you? Yeah, it has to be. Really? This is our new Mighty Car Mods car. Yeah. This is awesome. He's gone Euro. Really? Yeah, we're going Euro. You guys are killing us. Some kind of disease if you touch this. <laughs> but it is very tactile. You just want to touch it. And you definitely do want to take a photo of it. Well done, boys. Uh, would you believe me if I told you that uh, me and Marty behind the camera, we built that whole car for $1,600 with Reg Hotel May next year? Including buying the car. Including buying the car. $1,600? That's right. Does that change your opinion on, uh, on its street cred score? Ten. Yes. Ten. <laughs> Ten. We started with a street cred score of 3.2, and we're now getting scores of 8, 9, and even 10 out of 10. All of this for a total build and buy cost of around one and a half thousand dollars and a couple of weekends hanging with mates on the driveway. I built my own car, then win by an inch because someone else built it for me. Your car is your story, so don't let someone else write the book. We gotta get it.